Hello ladies and gentlemen, this video is the second of a series of three, so if you haven't seen the first one, the link will be in the description. How do we get someone to log in a system? So I've got software here, exampp web server, and there's some ready PHP code from earlier work, but in the last video I had described a plan. People visit a home page and they have the opportunity to log in. And when they log in, it goes to an HTML page that checks the username and password they've typed against a username and a password that is in a database. Depending on whether the username and password are correct or not, Either some data comes back from the database or no data comes back. The user has to be told either hello, you're logged in, we know your name, or else, sorry, try again, you can't have access to all our secrets. So that's, in rough overview, the plan that we came to. Let's talk a little about specific names of pages and things like that. We could have the username and the password form in the same page that is also doing this checking. The page, when you press this go button, is effectively reloaded and rerun. If the page is loaded with no username and no password, then you see the form. If it is loaded with a username and a password, then it's checked and you get a message, hello, you logged in, or try again. So the single page, login PHP, is going to do both jobs. Let's talk about some existing pages that we've got. So here I have got a website where there is an index page, a page of products and register, and some bases for images, style sheets for include files you know those files that get added to the rest of your site and that contain some useful information so nav included for the navigation that is in every page there could be some header in those include files all sorts of things here all we've got is some navigation and a file for database connections so not a very complicated, a very good looking website. The information in it is organized, which is going to help us know what needs to get added. And then one of the pages in there is to organize registration. Let's give a quick visit of these different pages. If I show you the index, products, you see at the top here, index products register, that's our navigation, which is included. And so any change to the navigation in the include file will reappear throughout the pages and the register which is this and registration creates a record in a database for someone who can later log in let's take a look at that record in the database the record is in mysql so yeah the table is called users there's a user id first name last name email pass for the password the password is encrypted using sha1 and information about the date that people registered as well. So if I go back to my plan, we now have a little bit more precise information. The user table that is discussed here with name and pass WD, the table that we're going to reuse is called users with an S. The unique thing that can be used as a username is the email colon and the password colon is called pass. We'll have to remember about the SHA-1 encryption so a slight variation, but overall the setup is going to work out the same. Right, let's talk about code. Here I've got Notepad++, I've got my register page. The register page has a form and uses the database. So since I need a form and I need to use the database, I'm going to speed myself up a bit by making a copy of this one and start off my idea of a login page with this stuff. So I take my register page, save as, We'll add it to our save uh, the pages login. And then we'll think about what needs to change with it and that sort of things. Okay, I still need the navigation. That would be a nice idea. Maybe I'll have to include the, the login page in navigation. But we can do that later. It includes the database connection. Yeah. Uh, then there's a bunch of errors about the first name, the last name. It's all stuff to do with registration, this. And I'm not 
yet sure what I need there. So I'm going to comment out a large amount of the PHP that was useful for the registration. I need to recycle some of it, but I don't quite know what yet. So I go here and if I put a slash and a star, it's a marker for comment. And at the end of this whole bunch of things, I put a star and a slash. I'll show you why in a sec I left that one last line. All of this stuff, I like Notepad++ for one more thing. Here, I can press this. I've hidden all of this commented stuff. You know, I can uncollapse it. Code from registration page needs changing. Now the only code actively doing something in PHP here is the bit that includes the navigation. Okay, so we get our navigation menu in the login page. We need that. Uh, that makes the connection to the database. Then there was plenty of code that uses that connection. We're not running it at the moment because we've commented it out. And then there's the MySQL close, which closes the connection to the database. So right now it's not going to be very harmful. It makes a connection to the database, shuts the connection, and does nothing at all otherwise. And then there is a form. It's the wrong form because it's a form for registering. We can clean up a footer another day. Right, since all of that has been taken out, I could actually watch how this page looks. Here, let's navigate here and not to the register page, but I can navigate to the login page. I've just saved it. I called it logged in. Oop, typo. There. It says index products register. That's my navigation. And it has create an account, which is all wrong, and a form, but it doesn't do anything, that form. Not in the login page. Because... When I press register, it just reloads the page. And remember that page runs no PHP or no interesting PHP. So no, I don't need to save that password. It says you are now registered. No, absolutely not. I went to the register page. Oh, it has probably added a thing with test. First test of our page and first error. Change the forms action. You see, the forms action is register.php. In other words, the data typed into this form goes to the register.php page to be processed. But I don't want it. This is the this will be the login form. So it needs to go to the login page to be processed. Login. Here we go. This page itself is called login. When the form is filled in and submitted, the same page will be reloaded and do the processing. Since we're here, let's clean up some of the wording and this sort of things. This is about logging in. So I'll call it login here in the title. And we'll remove the first and last name. We log in with email and a password. But we don't need the two passwords. We don't need to check the password. Rather than call that Pass one, I'm going to call it pass. And finally, the button for submitting our login, we'll call it login. Right, let's save that. Let's see what it looks like. No mistake this time. Login. Okay, it says login, email address, password, login button. Fantastic. So I can actually type uh, Charles and press the login button and nothing happens or rather the page is reloaded and the data put back in so the password got cleared and that's fine so far that's what the code says should happen now we need to make it check our login of course the page got loaded it showed us the right form here we say that we're connecting to the database and we've got all this code commenting out that is checking things like the username, the password, and all those sorts of things. Actually, there is a 
couple of things that definitely have no place there's the first name and last name then we're picking up the email uh, we will uncomment in a short way we're picking up the email the password oh the password is pass not pass one here then we're inserting something no this needs to change need to check login not add use the user to the database so that query here that's not right it makes the query it checks if there is a result and then it says registered no it will say you are logged in okay if there is no result that is there's no database thing then it says oopsie which is looking a little bit silly and that says your details are incomplete ah that's if there are uh, there are errors so it's rather than this we'll say enter your details and then the form comes later we had commented everything out not commented anymore then the only thing that needs more thinking is the query which is the wrong one for now I'm going to comment the query and we'll think about exactly what that query needs to be right it's checking the it's picking up the username the password if there is a username and a password uh, it's going to tell me off because here because there's no result we're going to do result equal quote unquote and leave out the mysql i query bit for later then we'll say enter your details and show the form if need be let's test this login.php hit enter syntax error oh what have i done line 50 ah semicolon because i commented things out this semicolon here not being seen at the end of the line anymore save that refresh that right okay empty username and password i put in test test login no no need to save that not much has happened but not much error has happened either oh that says oopsie shouldn't say oopsie Oh yes, that's right. There's no result, so it says oopsie. It shouldn't say oopsie. It should say, sorry, the login we did not recognize those details. Try again okay so here it says enter your details sorry we did not recognize your details try again and the same thing is showing fantastic we've not made the query to actually check that the username and the password are right so let's try in that photo of the plan i had an idea of a query that would work it was something to do with selecting the data from the database uh, where's that picture there select name and password from user where the name equal and it would be something there and password equal and it would be something there aha select name password from user when name equal password equal okay we'll remember that and let's go into the code this query here that needs to be 
we're not adding the user to the database it needs to be what we need to check the login uh, query equal right, it's select um, something um, I'll put star from users and it's not uh, first name last name and all that and it's not values it we use where email equal something we'll work that out and pass equal something we'll work that out I don't need the values thing uh, but there's some variables here yeah P was the password pass P was the password and if I go up here and E was the email so here E is the email and then we don't need this bunch of things ah I had forgotten about the the encryption and pass equal we have to encrypt the password the user enters their password in clear but the database has got the password in encrypted form so we compare the password the user has typed to the database but actually we we encrypt it first so we compare the SHA-1 of what the user has typed to the password that is in the database and if the SHA-1 of the user's password and the SHA-1 that is in the database are the same then the user's password and the record user registration are the same so we can actually do this without even knowing what the user's password is have an idea we're going to check that this query is working correctly copy that go to the database see here I can test some SQL I'm going to test the SQL that was in my PHP uh, and I'm going to do where email equal test and pass equal SHA1 of test press go Right, it returns to me there's a user number nine with the first name test the last name test email test the password shower of test whatever that is if I run the query with the wrong username and password I get no result with a correct username and password I get a result that lists me the first name the last name the email the registration date of the person now let's go and use that I said here select everything from users maybe that is good actually like that I'll get the user's first name and last name and all of that information and I could display to the user information that says hello and welcome and use their personal information or maybe I can restrict what they what I obtain from the database at this point I want their first name their last name and maybe their email as well and that is enough information for the sort of things I want to do I think the first name last name and email I spelt it like that in the database columns first name underscore last name underscore email nothing yet so there's a code this will collect the first name the last name and the email for the correct user if there is a correct user or else it will send back nothing oh I need to run the query of course I need to run the query and here if there is a result it will say you are logged in but if there is not then it will say we don't recognize your details let's check login.php okay showing all this we'll try someone who is not logged in first uh, what should happen is that it will say sorry try again so boo boo and press login and error 
Oh, what does that say? Okay, it's the login page, line 52. Right, let's go and see. Line number 52. I know what I've done. Undo. Yeah, I had this result equal and I undid the, the comment. If I remove this part, I will make result equal MySQL query with a semicolon at the end of the line. So now the query runs and the result of the query goes in here. Okay, so let's step back and do this again. We try a username who's not logged in, or, or rather a username that does not exist. Boo, boo, you are logged in. And then it says login as well. But I'm not. Let's try test test. My test user whose username, whose uh, email is test and, and uh, login is test as well. And it also says you are logged in. And it still says I'm logged in. <laughs> What's going on here? So this query runs with the user's email and the user's password. It returns a result. If the result has no data in, I know what's going on. The result always exists. And so the if result gives us something. The trick is that sometimes the result exists, but has zero rows of data. And sometimes it has exactly one row of data. And that's what we need to test. Not whether there is a result, but whether the result has an empty set or not. My SQL PHP check number of rows. Because what we want is the number of rows in MySQL num rows. Actually, we've used MySQL I throughout. A more recent version of MySQL that stands for MySQL improved. There is a MySQL I num rows. I like W3 schools as well. I think I'll go there and see what they say about MySQL num row. Enter the returns the number of rows in the result set. Ah, so we run the thing, we get the result set. We find out the number of rows in there, row count equal. I think I'm going to steal this line. Paste, row count. And row count picks up the number of rows in the result. And that number of rows, it's zero if the username and password are wrong, or one if they are correct. If row count equal one. In fact, we'll do one if it's correct. If it's anything other than one, it should, if it's not one, it should be zero. If it's anything other than one, either because there's something stupid in the database or else because the user is not correctly logged in, then we give this message. Like that, will, it will catch any possible monkey's business with the database. Okay, so let's try I'm a hacker with password no. Right, sorry we did not recognize. Oh, good, good. This time it said it was, a, it, it said that it did not log you in. And what if uh, I try test test, which was my standard user, my test user. You are logged in at last. Yes. So now if I enter in there, a username and a password corresponds to an actual registered user, it will say you're logged in. If I enter something that doesn't match, it will say, sorry, try again, which is what I want. There's a couple of other funny things that, uh, first of all, I'm logged in, so I shouldn't get the option to log in. I don't need any of that. I could get a welcome message that tells me my name it would be nice. So when we're logged in, we'll add a few things in here to make sure that when we are logged in, that is uh, remembered by the system rather than just display a message and that's it. And then if we are logged in, then this will not be displayed. So one thing is that we're going to have to add something there. And the other thing is that this is going to only be displayed in certain conditions, there'll be an if around all of this form display. Uh, I need to think about what that is exactly, but basically some PHP will start here. If 
something. And the, the PHP in question will end here so that the form is only displayed if you're not logged in. Oh, uh, that's some PHP code. PHP uh, typo. End of PHP. So the bit from that bracket to that bracket that is the form will only be displayed if the user is not logged in this is incorrect code it marks the things that we need to think about so to know if the user is logged in or not that's going to be the else thing that we need to do here so if the user is logged in we give them a nice message that says you are logged in but then also we record that user is logged in and their name maybe Now I could use a variable here. I could do something like this dollar is logged in equal uh, yes <laughs> or something like that and then use that is logged in value later uh, to find out. Uh, we call this doing a flag that is you have a special variable just so that you can have a remember you know the flag is up <laughs> or else it is down and if the flag is up you're going to do all these things but if it's down you do you won't. that would work but there an another problem comes up which is what happens across the multiple pages of my website because if i'm logged in i want to be logged in throughout the site and with this PHP, if I set a variable here, when some new page is loaded, the variable will have been forgotten or else it would have to be throughout the site. So we need something that records that the user is logged in and is remembered across the whole website. That thing exists. It's called a session. Record that the user is logged in and their name in a session. How do I do a session in PHP? Uh, let's go back to our old friend W3Schools. PHP variables, constant operators, which look so all sorts of exciting things, apparently. PHP sessions. What is it? No, I'll read what it is later. Uh, a, a PHP session is a way to record information that is going to be available for the whole session that the user has with the website. We need to start the session at the very beginning of the web page, so we'll do that. And we then have the possibility of setting what are called session variables, and session variables record things that are personal to the session. A session variable that says the user is logged in or else that their name is dot dot dot. Right, start the session because we're going to need one. And then what was the code when we actually wanted to set a session variable? So I don't want to remember the user's favorite color, but I do want to remember that they are logged in. Session logged in equal yes and we can also record in there a few things to do with the uh, a few things to do with the result and the the name of the user and so on how do we get the row of data and in the row of data, how do I get the first name, the last name, the email? Where's the MySQL database stuff? Select data. We select data, we check 
check for the number of rows result fetch a sock and then row okay so this takes the result it uses fetch a sock to pick up the the row of data in that in this example it uses the loop to pick up the several rows of data so that you know it picks up a row of data then another one then another one then another one and here we haven't got multiple logged in users there's only one so we won't need the while loop but we will need picking up the row with fetch a sock we won't be echoing this but we will be using the row so i copy those lines My result is the result of running the query. With that result, I do fetch a sock and that picks up the row of data. This curly bracket does not have a place in what I'm doing here. This round bracket doesn't either. I've picked up the row from the result. This uses echo to display the information, but I'm not sure what I need is echo. First name, last name. We could display your name is first name, last name. Is my data with first name and last name? First, last. Right, it is, but my first name and my last name have underscores there and we're going to remember that person's first name and last name logged in yes first name is this and last name back through this so we pick up the result and count how many rows there are in the result. If there is exactly one row, then the user has typed in the correct username and password. We tell them they are logged in. Oh, they've done something funny here because I'm making this link to login, which is not needed. We tell them you're logged in and we record in a session that they are logged in. Then we pick up the row of data, display their name and record in our session what their name is what their credentials are we could do the same with email email Right, is this it? So we do not recognize your details, etc., etc., etc. Now that this session information exists, we can use it here to not display the form. So you know this if not logged in, we're going to use the session. The session, the session to check if the user is logged in. So the session, it's the variable dollar session. And then there are different session variables. So inside the session variable, it's, it's an array of data. And in the session variable, one of them is logged in. Time for another test. Right, there's the login page. I'm going to try the usual I'm a hacker. 
with no password and there's an error of course there's an error so much change that will always cause an error somewhere or other line 84 ah it's my session logged in more about sessions ah underscore session Uh, let's try again another error property access not allowed in still line 84 php check session variable exists is set what i should have done there is an instruction is set that says if this variable exists now if someone is not logged in the variable does not exist so if this variable does not exist display the form if the variable exists then that's because they are logged in and in that case these lines will be skipped over and it won't display the form Log in. Sorry, we did not recognize your details. Try again. Fantastic. Right. I try again the test user. Test. Test. Log in. You're logged in. Your name is test test. There's a little bit of cleanup to do here. Your name is needs a space. Um, first name, last name. Fine. Now I'm logged in. So I guess the next time I go to a page, it could actually tell me what my name is or something like that. Here, I return to the login page again. Enter your, de enter your details. It didn't show me the form. That's because it's using the session to remember that I'm logged in, but it still says enter your details, which is a bit silly. Where does the enter your details come from? Here. Oh, the form has not been filled in so it says enter your details I'm going to move this to here which means we don't need this end there and this else but I think that still doesn't resolve all of our problem let's see PHP I'm getting the navigation but I'm not being told I'm logged in and I'm not being given the login form either it would be nice to see my name and all of those things now and I think it's something to do with the session you, you see this says if the session logged in is not set then display the login form and what we could do is if it is set that's when we display you are logged in and a name and all of those sorts sort of things else this else case is the else that goes with that I'm going to reword this display login form so we're going to place in there all of the display of information when a user is logged in that organizes the page in a stricter way first of all the machine will do all of the processing seeing if we should be logged in given the data we've filled in the form if we should be logged in it sets a session but it won't do any of the associated display. Then after all of the checking and the logic is done, in a second section of the code, it will do all of the display, but not the logic that is already sorted out. So to do that, if I return to the logic, I remove this echo you logged in, and I place it here. So 
we set the session we pick up the data but yeah, we will display it later that sets the session for the first name and the last name oh, there's a typo here that should be first name do you know I'm going to leave the typo just so that we can find out what that causes and here we're going to display these things displaying the first name and so on but we're not going to display them from the row of data we're going to display it from the session uh, there's a couple of reasons for that first of all the database connection has closed here by the time it gets to these lines the row doesn't have the data anymore because we've closed the database session but second if the user is logged in from an old login and hasn't filled in their form again then we can't obtain this thing from all of the logic that is coming here we obtain it from the old session that he they have from before first time they log in it sends to session after that the machine remembers their login from the session that should do it for display the first name the last name okay what happens now let's uh, let's reload uh, it is something to do with the session but it says you are logged in it says this and we get a bunch of errors immediately after so it's struggling to do this line session first name session last name remember I said there was a typo let's correct the typo and check web developer here the machine remembers sessions in progress through the use of cookies where is the cookie yes there is a cookie set for localhost PHP session ID see there is a cookie that remembers the number of the current session and through that cookie the machine remembers all of our details remove that session ID there right then if I reload this it will be as if there had been no session okay I can try user test password test and it's worked all right we're now logged in apparently what if I want to log out well okay for now as a temporary thing I am going to once more show the PHP session ID and take it down and I can try logging in again All right let's try I'm a hacker our old friend and I say no and log in and say sorry we did not recognize you try again enter your details and we've already seen that if I type test test it all work okay from here there are a couple more things that would be interesting to do the first one is to do with displaying the user's uh, name and password in every page how would I do something like that well I would take code a little like what we have here so that says you are logged in and so on and the test you see this says if the session is not set display form else say you're logged in well I could probably do something like if the session is set display your login username and password or something like that. if I want this information to be displayed on every page the easiest place to do it would be to go to inside these includes and maybe along with the navigation or in some new header part of the page I would actually put in the code that says if there is a session display the session user if not the link to the login page something like that so that would be a, an interesting and not too difficult development of this work a second one is it's really not nice to have to log out by turning off the session by clicking on the developer tool listen if I want to actually log out 
that gets done by destroying the session or by removing the data from the session. To remove the data from the session, PHP, how to destroy a session in PHP. Best way to completely destroy a session. Here, yeah, apparently session destroy destroys all of the data associated to the session, which sounds like the perfect kind of thing to log somebody out. So we could have an instruction somewhere a logout.php page maybe that would run session destroy and then tell people that they're logged out. And with that logout, we would have something that allows people to register, log in, log out, show different things depending if they are registered or not on our web page. Right. Once more for the road, the structure of this page. To make things clearer, I'm going to minimize a number of uh, a, a, a number of things in there. Have I minimized everything? Nearly everything? Fantastic. There are three sections of PHP in this page. The first is to require the header. Okay. It displays the navigation, that kind of thing. The second is to access the information that the user might have typed into the form. But maybe let's visit the form first. And the third is to display the form. More precisely, is to display either the form or information that says that you're logged in, depending if there is a session or not. If there is no session, if not is set. If there is no session, it will display the form. Or else, if there is a session, it will tell you you're logged in, give you your name and your password. Right, let's minimize this bit. This part processes the form. That is, it checks that there is an email with a message, if not, that there is a password, we're preparing a message, if not, and if there's no problem with the presence of an email and a password, it queries the database to find out whether the username and the password actually exists. If the username and the password are correct, it sets the session so that we can say we're logged in afterwards. If not, it tells us to try again. And in that case, the session is not set. So overall, if we understand it in chunks, quite a simple structure to this whole page. Let's compare it to the plan that we had been making. We have a login page, which displays a username and a password form and checks against the database if the username and the password are the correct ones. If they are correct, it will display hello. It will set a session so that we display hello and so that there's a record that the user is logged in. If the username or password are not correct, it will show the form again. Mission accomplished. Oh, one more job that would be nice to do. Have the login page in there. Maybe a link to the login page if people are not logged in. I would have an offer to log in if you are not logged in and your username and a password and an offer to log out. If you are logged in it's a job very similar to the code that is already showing you and so it is something that you can do without help from what you have seen there we are 